Hi everyone, I'm back. This is Anne Van Avalon, the Water Witch. I just wanted to make another video. Um, this time I wanted to talk about the shadow side of water um, and how we can use water um, to kind of help to heal and embrace our shadow traits in order to bust through and make change. So shadow. Shadow is the negative side of us. We all have a shadow. The only place that you don't have a shadow is in the dark, where there is no light. So if you have um, any type of light, it usually casts a shadow. And so this shadow then becomes this representation for the negative side of things. Things like uh, anger, jealousy, hatred, um, cattiness, um, gossip, you name it. There are the things about you that, you know, you don't really like. Um, maybe they're vices or maybe they're, um, uh, you know, just not wanting to get up and, and maybe laziness. I mean, there's so many different like negative things out there, but what happens when you get stuck there, right? Like beyond saying, this is a negative shadow trait. Now what? You did the meditation, you went through a shadow meditation and you kind of like talked to your higher self and you got into, you know, um, uh, I guess a, a dialogue with yourself about, hey, this thing about me is not great and it's kind of taking over in certain aspects and how can I work through this? Well, there's many ways to work through it mundanely, but water is such a wonderful vehicle of transformation. We know that water has at least three phases. Um, there's a new fourth phase of water, but I'm just going to be talking about, you know, the three right now, but it can transform from a solid to a liquid, um, liquid to gas and ice, gas and the actual liquid water. And so we can see that it transforms. We also know with Dr. Emoto's work um, about the water crystals that different vibrations impact water and will show a marked change in the crystalline structure. Dr. Emoto also took it a little bit further and started comparing sacred sites, sacred water sites to polluted sites um, and comparing and contrasting that as well as speaking to the water positively and negatively. And he found that there's a huge contrast in the way that the water molecule looks. The crystal water, the water crystal looks under the microscope based on different vibrations. So the shadow, the shadow is I mean, it's part of all of us. Denying the shadow side of things doesn't really do anybody any good. Um, all it does is feed that shadow and ignore it even more. So rather, perhaps you went through meditation and you found this shadow tree. Now what? You can use water to help work yourself through this. Things like sacred baths on the dark moon um, would, are a great start. You can also do a series of sacred baths where you meditate on this shadow trait throughout the moon cycles. You can also take these shadow traits and write them down and then take them either to a local body of water or, um, your own sacred vessel at the house and drown them. And then if you if you have a sacred vessel, this is what I do with it, is I put the paper in the, in the vessel with the water and I let it kind of sit for a little bit as I'm kind of meditating on releasing and healing those shadow traits within myself. And as the paper starts to get mushy, I go ahead and I use the energy of destruction with my fingers tearing it apart to get in there and really help to like unlock that, um, that connection and that um, dependency that you maybe have on this shadow trait. Then um, you can take the water and offer it to the earth. If you're gonna work with this same type of thing at a um, local water body, you don't really wanna be putting paper into the water. Um, it's not great for it. So instead, what you can do is write on the leaves charge the leaves with a different intent or mark a symbol that represents that shadow tray on the leaf or driftwood and cast it into the um, into the water boats made out of leaves or sticks little rafts that you perhaps create out of the local environment the brush the sticks that you find around the water those can also be charged with that same um, shadow trait, the things that you're trying to heal within yourself, and then they can then be sent down the river. 
Now, you also need to follow up with this on the mundane side and make sure that you're continually um, working in a mundane way to also heal these shadow traits. Um, if your mundane and your spiritual life are not aligned, your magic doesn't work. That's one of the biggest, um, I think, uh, disconnects with magic and why spells don't work is because oftentimes our mundane lives are not aligned with our spiritual lives and you need that alignment. Now, you can also make waters that um, will help you to perhaps heal this particular shadow trait. So amethyst is well known um, to be used for addiction. So if you have an addiction problem, perhaps using a crystal, um, amethyst crystal water um, in the mundane world, alongside your intense shadow work meditations, um, will enhance everything that you're doing in the spiritual world. Um, so partaking in this um, amethyst gem water is going to then change the vibrations of your body, um, not only with the water, but you have the amethyst in there now as well. So now you've got crystal power in the water. The water absorbs and enhances the power of that crystal. And of course, we're not going to eat amethyst because, ow, that would hurt your teeth. Um, <laughs> but you can get that power of the amethyst inside you by using the gem water. Tiny caution about that. Um, and there's other videos and instructions online about this, but please be careful. You cannot put all crystals in water. There is a direct and an indirect method of creating crystal waters. In fact, I do believe that um, the crystal Bible here, I don't, this is a, a book right here that's quite popular, and I believe it's this one. There is in the back here a how to make the indirect versus the um, direct method. Um, it's it's one of these two books. Um, but uh, yeah, it's either this one or this one here. One of the two. Um, but there's an indirect and a direct method. Direct method is quite easy. You take your water, you put your stone in it, and you charge it. You can enhance it with moon energy, with um, vibration, with drumming, with chanting, with singing, um, just toning. Um, there's many different uh, ways. I'm thumbing through this book back here to see if it's this one. But, oh, yep, here it is. Ta-da! There we go. So it is the Crystal Bible 2. So there's um, some instructions back here if you're interested. Now, like I said, not all crystals can go in water. You can't put selenite in water. Some um, crystals are toxic. You don't want to drink malachite. Um, and so you really need to know your stones well and their physical properties before you decide to ingest. Now, the indirect method can be used for all stones. That's when you take two vessels, um, so one vessel here, and you would put your crystal inside, and then you would set that vessel inside of another vessel, and then you would fill the water around, in, around this bowl allowing it to absorb the vibrations. So that's one way that you can also work with um, the shadow and, and to work that magic in the mundane level, the physical level, but also um, in, in the spiritual realms. So if you're doing intense work, that's stuff that can en enhance it. Um, if you're going through shadow work, you know, stay strong. It's tough work to do, but it's transformative. So um, just keep pushing through and remember that we all go through that dark night of the soul. We all have this, um, we all have trauma. We all have pain from somewhere. And um, a lot of times the shadow work is connected to that. And um, so it's it's hard. It's difficult going into your past and, and bringing these traumas up and learning how to heal them. If you're an energy worker or a Reiki practitioner, um, you know, using Reiki on your water very specifically in a healing energy is also another way to work with um, the physical water and the shadow. There are a lot of ways to do the shadow work and, and going through it and processing it. 
um, and there's no one right way. And there is oftentimes many ways and many things that you must do in order to really conquer the shadow. Um, we, it's hard work. And so like we as, as humans often don't like to get emotionally dirty. And so it's much easier to push this stuff aside. So, um, take, take it step by step, day by day with it, like moderation. You don't have to fix your shadow today. That's not going to happen. Um, it may take three years. Um, I'm not going to lie. There's some healing that is a process, which means that water can then support you while you're going through this process. And perhaps you may have baths that will help you to relax, help you to meditate, maybe just anti-stress baths so that you can decompress enough to then start working on your own spiritual growth and, um, I guess, evolution of kind of getting out of your negative patterns. So I hope that these ideas have kind of given you some things to think about and to incorporate into your own practice, especially with shadow work. Um, just remember to always know your stones and your crystals before you ingest them um, and, you know, enjoy some sacred baths and uh, really care for yourself and love yourself while you're processing your shadow work. Good luck with it. I know how hard it is.